Hi, I'm Trevor Martin. And we're, and we're screaming, screaming on, on the spot. spot. And they're going to get to know me through movies. Perfect. And you are too. <laughs> we are, That was a, I didn't mumble as much on the we're screaming on the spot. Good job. Thank you. Maybe it's because Chris that's isn't a, here. That's a problem for yeah. us. <laughs> did I mess up my one line? No, no you was, did great. It was perfect. Wonderful. Oh, you guys are really we're saying. We're off to the races. It's really complimenting. It messed me. Not, did I mess it up? You just no. Me All right. We messed it up last time. <laughs> like that's kind of the ongoing joke on our podcast is we are terrible at in- introing because we're corny and weird and whatever. Um, but last last week, our guest said it, and we didn't say it. we're screen on the spot at the same time. No, we, I kind of mumbled my way through off. it. Yeah. <laughs> That's, right. That's guys, okay, though. You yeah. nailed yeah. it. <laughs> you'll get there. Well, Trevor, thanks so much for coming. Uh, we had I asked you, or I invited you on, because you're actually the president of IFCKC. Um, Which stands for what? The Independent Filmmakers Coalition. There you go. There you go. Thank you, mm-hmm. Sarah. Oh, sorry. Uh, KC stands for Kansas City. Oh, <laughs> well, that's what hung me up. I would not, not, yeah. not have known that. It's two words. Yeah. Kansas City. Kansas City. It's not the yeah. Kite Coalition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kite Coalition. Kale. <laughs> We're just really into kale. Yeah. <laughs> named after KC. Um, how long have you been president? I have been president for five months and actually running for uh, election in uh we have our elections in november okay so you're gonna go for it again vote trevor i was thank you (laughs) yes i um i'm gonna do it for one year it's a lot of work i'm gonna do it for one year and um hopefully we can check this a year from now and see if we took the ifc to another level tell us um a little bit about the organization like what what do you guys do yeah, so I think the IFC and, and you know for KC specifically is is focused on really helping people make their first film, but also the tools and access to people to then also uh, showcase their best film. So um, I think in the past the IFC was really looked at a place where it's like the junior varsity filmmaking of of Kansas City. You'd come in, you'd kind of you know get some experience under your belt, go out make make a film, um, participate in a couple of um, um, you know, some of our different film events, which, which we can talk about and, um, and then almost like graduate from the IFC. And, mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know, there's so many other great film organizations and, you know, we have a film office that I think that we can do more in up leveling the IFC, uh, and, and also participating in, you know, very well done, um, you know, short films and feature films by really, um, you know, strong filmmakers in the area and start to connect with what the IFC is doing with, um, you know, for example, the, the, you know, visit KC and the KC film office and things like that. So is that why you wanted to be president? Did you just have a feeling that you could kind of take it in the direction? that? Yeah, I was, I was vice president and I was really more just, um, wanting to make sure we kept it active. Um, the, uh, president at that time had decided to step down and it was obviously being vice president natural to move into that role and the reason, yeah, I, I, I do think that um, prior to that, uh, he and I were having conversations and he was having a lot of conversations with people around, you know, more things that we could be doing in Kansas City. And, um, and yeah, the more I got involved, the more I got really fully engaged as president and, and working really with a great board, um, you know, I started to really see the potential of, of taking this really to a, a, a much bigger scale while still being a great place for people to also make their first film. Cause that, that was something I was really passionate about mm-hmm. was um, you hear people with a lot of really good ideas, but they have no idea how to get it started. Yeah. And it's artists. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of people with good ideas who just haven't quite, t- you know, it's one of those mm-hmm. things that sometimes it's that mentality of, you know, like, Hey, I want to, uh, I want to, I want to be a graphics art. You know, I want to be a great guitar player. Mm-hmm. So I got to go buy a Gibson Les Paul. It's like mm-hmm. you probably just go. To, why don't you go to Walmart Wait. and take some lessons? Because that's going to sure. s- sit on your floor, yeah, for yeah. a long time, and then probably wind up on the basement. Because guitar is hard. I've tried that. Too. <laughs> I did too, by the way, and, and I probably bought a, and I, pay, I had to pay for the guitar, I and did it was lessons, a little and you yeah. know, like it just didn't work out so well. Yeah, my fingers don't bend that way. And sure, it's hard. Well, that's really cool because yeah. we see a lot of success from people from Kansas City, whether it's you know Morgan Cooper, of course, or sure. Sav Rogers, or people mm-hmm. like that. So it's, but you never. I, it's one thing to celebrate those people, but obviously you want to try to help other people who don't have that experience kind of have a leg up. Mm-hmm. So I think that's really cool. It's a big city and it, and it is a small town all at the same time. And mm-hmm. it, I mean, it's crazy. I've, I, you know, I'd been in, um, you know, a film with, uh, with Morgan and, and, and worked with him on a, on, a, well, a number of things. Um, and actually saw him the day, uh, I saw him at a, a film festival that the Screenland Armor was having. Mm-hmm. 
and we caught up for a minute and I'll never forget it because I, I said, um, you know, I told him, I said, hey, it's good to see you. And he turned around, he was walking out the door and, he, and Morgan always had this thing. He'd look back and he'd go, you good? <laughs> I was like, man, I'm great. And an hour later is when he released uh, the Bel Air trailer. Nice. That oh, that's changed very his cool. Life. You yeah, know, it was just like it was crazy to have yeah. that moment. He asked me if I was good, and I had times. no idea yeah. that his life was about to change like that. And Joe Lee is on uh, um, Young Rock. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, that's right. He, yep. Yeah, he plays, and and you know he just was on our station. Still, it is on NBC. Yeah, yeah. No, I know it's on NBC, but oh, did it get well, renewed? Yes. It's still yep. going. I, I think so. It. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's just, it's interesting, right? You could go on and on and on yeah. about people yeah. um, that, that have done great things here and then have, have gone off to do even more other places. And, and I mean, six months before maybe Young Rock, um, he had written uh, The Jog, which was a short mm-hmm. film that he collaborated right. yep. with people around here sure. about. And so, so it's just, it's, it's amazing. And it's awesome to see that. But it also, you know, think about when you want to look at where can you, where can you take this city, it's who mm-hmm. you know, but why is it who you know? It's because it's access. Sure. And then if more and more people in the city think, you know, were aware, gosh, this quality of work and these quality of people are here, would we want to get more involved? And then if, you know, people with deeper pockets wanted to get involved, their access is to people who also have influence on tax credits and things mm-hmm. like that. Um, because people, people remember, you know, when, uh, you have an exciting premiere in Kansas mm-hmm. city or when mm-hmm. winter's Where bone, town, yeah, like winter's bone, TV, you know, winter's back bone. was casted out of here and, and, uh, um, or a lot of Ozark it wasn't yes. filmed in and, and that's, and, and that's usually when, um, Fargo Steph, you know, um, you know, and the Kansas city film office is quoted a lot of times it's in really nice articles, but they're talking about why stuff's not made here. Yeah. Oh, right. All the time. And, and, and the other version of that is to go, Wow this was shot here how -hmm. can we do more of that yeah and also i feel like just people are just upset when it's like oh well i don't understand why that's it's like we need (laughs) more incentives it's not that hard you want to see more of that like go to oklahoma (laughs) yeah (laughs) just drive down oklahoma you'll find out why they shoot things there and not here and why actors here yeah drive down to oklahoma to audition so um we were just talking earlier you're in it Mm -hmm. right so that's your job job that you make money to support yourself, probably That's put right. a roof over your head and food in your belly. Um, what is it that makes you um, involved in film? Like, what is, what's, where's that passion from? So it's a corny story, but true. Ever since I was a little kid, I wanted to be an actor. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, of course, didn't really do much with it. In fact, in, in high school, I was in drama for a semester and the whole you're, who's a thespian, who's not a thespian, the whole, you know, it was just, it was, it was too much like of a competition. And then in sports, right, whether you're lettering, not, you know, it was just <laughs> yeah. the whole, and I was just like, man, this is, a, it was, um, it was cool, but it was also at the time I was just like, I think I'm going to focus on other things. Well, I married um, pretty young. Um, I think I was 22. And a buddy of mine from high school ended up getting on a show from uh, on MTV called Spider Games. And I was, it was really cool. It was just to see your friend on, on TV and all that. And I think my wife picked up on it. And for uh, a five-year wedding anniversary present, she got me acting classes with uh, Andy Garrison. Oh, cool. Uh, and she had no idea how much that. Uh, anniversary but gift you weren't gonna like cost. acting oh, sure. like you'd done one a right, little yeah. bit of theater in high yeah, school a little, and then yeah. it's like boom here's an acting class yeah. five years later and uh yeah so from um and and i i caught the bug and kept training with andy and then signed on with a, a great agency here called exposure and started to go out and you know do audition those type of things and then got much more involved in actual uh what i love to do is you know uh work with people on films those type mm-hmm. of things Awesome. So really the acting thing is what you want to do with your life probably. But the IT thing is just what's yeah. It's paying your it yeah. Mortgage it, right now. it is though um and and, and actually like I, guess, I was no well I was I was given the okay by my wife to sell the house, move the kids to Los Angeles really? when they were little. And I will say I'm glad I didn't because I was glad that, you know, we could you know they could have the experience they have. They could be grown, uh, you know, they could grow up, go to KU and, you know, spend a lot of time with their dad mm-hmm. and we wouldn't have been broke out in Los Angeles and all right. those type of things. But yes, today I very much balance a lot, you know, being able to spend time on films, mm-hmm. work on films, act, those type of things. Yeah. And that is absolutely what I would what you would love do. to do. Sure. Like I, I guess like my point is it's more than a hobby for you. Very much. Like it's, yeah, and, and I'm doing it much more now towards working towards those things, mm-hmm. right? So, yes, for a long time it was a hobby, meaning I know I was going to work 
full time. I know that you know that was going to be both my responsibility, but what I wanted to do is be able to give my kids the you know experience that we felt like um, they should have. Now it's certainly more acting and even writing or directing or those type all of those type of things with a mm-hmm. purpose, much more of a purpose. Very cool. Okay. Let's start our questions. Sure. Trevor, what is the first movie you remember seeing in a theater? Uh, I think it was uh, Empire. So actually, trying to think through it. I think it was Empire Strikes Back. Oh, man. That's a good one. It means I'm really young. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I remember I remember waking up at the end of Star Wars because I think movies used to be so cheap. My mom and dad would just drop my older brothers there uh, off to watch it. And I think I would just go and fall asleep. But I do remember. Mm-hmm. I remember going and seeing Empire Strikes Back. That was pretty awesome. That's pretty cool. Those are those kind of movies that I, it's like uh, I was born later but would would have been awesome to see in theaters sometimes like jaws like to be able to have experienced mm-hmm. that when it came out in theaters or any of those original Star here's Wars. a fun thing to do ask your parents where they were the first time they saw some of those movies because um, i should i think like jaws was it was definitely a date night for my mom and dad yeah. like, i remember <laughs> them funny. i remember my mom telling a story about seeing jaws in the uh-huh. theater and just like how scary and yeah. awful it was and how oh, yeah. it like instilled fear in everybody and my dad still says it's the scariest movie he's ever yeah. seen because he saw it in theaters yes when he would have been 13 11 and something like that and uh, terrified him the other fun face. story that i have was my grandma who's in her 90s now she told me i didn't even think to ask her this but like it came up in conversation and she was like oh yeah i remember when star wars came out she's like her and her husband and their friends like their friend's husband said oh we got to go see this movie and she told me this whole story about going to see star wars how amazing it was and i was like i cannot believe i never thought to like ask you like where you were like when you got to see this like what's the story behind what did you guys think of this when this was coming out did you think it was like some weird space movie (laughs) it's just like really neat to hear the stories from like people who's who got sure. to see those things yeah yeah absolutely theater. yeah i got to uh i asked my grandma just thankfully remembered it, who grew up here um if she had ever gone out to 18th and vine and i should have brought a notebook oh yeah. that was their passion oh and they said afterwards they would get in and and you know people would get out and have jam sessions and i mean just her list of people they that she went down and it was like oh, i'm so glad i That's asked so cool. yeah. i gotta ask again and write them down yeah, yeah because there were so some cool. of them were um i know one it was a lady and i now I forgot her name that you know, I think Bill Clinton had given her the uh, Presidential Medal of Freedom. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's like yeah. these, and, and and I don't even know if she was aware of that. She was just, you know, transported sure. back yeah. to being 20, yeah. 21 years old, just so dancing and, you know, uh, <laughs> having a great time with people. Who, because also at that time, right, it's also the tickets they could afford to get into. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. You know, they, you know, they, 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 I don't think she could afford to go to Elvis or those type of things, yeah. too. So, it's, yeah, it's pretty cool. Well, that's a good go one. Back. I should ask any of them if they ever saw, sure. like, musicians. Like, sure, oh, sure. Who did you see in concert? Never, just never, you just well, don't that, think to ask yeah, people that. Yeah, that one I have talked to my parents a lot about, have but oh, yeah, yes. I never really they, get anything very like profound. Cool, cool music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is a movie that you saw way too young? Poltergeist. <laughs> Terri- uh, terrifying. Terrifying. Yeah. And I remember convincing my mom, because again, being y- youngest of three, right, I was always the, but let me go, let me go, let me yeah. go, don't uh-huh. leave me behind. And uh, um, yeah, I think that was an I told you so moment. Yeah. <laughs> too much. Too many nightmares when you got home. Yeah. I'm scared of the TV. Spiritual realm. Yeah. yeah uh-huh. that, that The whole thing. And I think whatever, uh, it's a long time ago when they came out of the pool. Or, yeah. <laughs> just, uh, yeah. No, I... Um, I don't think my I I don't think by that time my you know I was around my parents wanted any more kids sleeping in the bed but yeah <laughs> I was trying to defy those odds yeah how do you feel about scary movies now um, I love them overall if they are more probably suspense I think there's so many things that go th- so much more towards the gore mm-hmm. or yeah. the, those are the ones that I I actually think I just more turn off now but if yeah. if they're if it's um uh you had to suspend a little reality I get it but uh, if you guys saw Black Phone. Yeah, that was great. That was really good. good. I'm that not a great. horror person. Yeah. <laughs> well, I like to. I do Big Brothers Big Sisters, and my little, uh, he's 16, so he was allowed to see, you know, whatever. And so, uh, kind of have a horror movie buddy to go mm. to because that's not my my <laughs> yeah. wife. Like like every comedian will tell you now, my wife hates horror movies, but if it was a real life account of a serial killer, she's in. Oh, mm-hmm. really? If yeah. it happened in real life, she can't wait to break that's down crazy. exactly what happened on every single thing on that's Netflix. Crazy. But a horror movie, no thank you. I was just telling somebody else, I'm actually the opposite, because if it really happened, then it just is going to make me more uncomfortable. But, you know. we, we I can't watch those, it. Because it really happened. We yeah. like that. I don't I, know. It, 
I agree. Yeah. They're fascinating, the, the true crime yeah. things, too. I don't know why women have suddenly found <laughs> a passion yeah. for those docuseries, but... <laughs> but at least they'll keep making them. Yeah. That's, That's true. Oh, yeah. It's like the latest thing. Uh -huh. They will. Well, what is your uh, favorite movie with some sort of tie to Kansas City, whether it was set here, filmed here, has an actor from here? Maybe even All Creatures Here Below. Um, okay. Um, and I, I always say his name. I always botch his name. Oh, David, David Dismalchen. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> We've actually had him you on uh, when... We practiced his name a lot We practiced we his name. Uh, he, when he was here promoting All Creatures Here Below, actually, when mm -hmm. it was in the Kansas City Film Festival, yep. I think. Mm -hmm. um, he was very cool. Yeah, I, um, I I just, I thought that was, um, you know, it's one of the saddest films I've ever seen, but performance-wise and just how the whole film was put together, I thought, um, and, and again, fortunately, I had the theater-going experience and uh, seeing it in a theater, it was one of those ones afterwards where it just, you know, again, the next day, you still kind of feel a little, mm -hmm. a, a little in your heart, you know, and, and, and I, and, and I think, you know, you grow up and I, I really enjoyed the movies that make you feel good overall. Right. Okay. And then sometimes, you know, the movies later, as I've gotten older, the ones, the reality that life isn't fair and, you know, or, and it was just so complex around just people come up in so many different circumstances and then that their journey is just going to be so, so different. Mm -hmm. But that, that, that was one I thought, I thought it was just really, really well done. And, um, outstanding that it was made here and yeah shout out to Chad Crenshaw that was in it so. that's right we also know Chad we also know Chad uh, everybody knows Chad cool. yeah everybody, everybody, knows everybody, knows, everybody knows Chad everybody knows Davis <laughs> yeah. uh, he helped he helped us write a short film a few years ago um, and he definitely made it funnier uh, also uh, and he's David Dismulch is actually pretty intense uh, or not intense maybe but he's very set on like trying to bring more stuff here yeah, he, is. He, he even told us a story about whatever next project he had written and trying to make it come here and and, uh, and the director of that film made a short or something here recently, and he was very taken with Kansas City, so that's that's pretty cool. I think that's the case with a lot of people who actually do end up working here. That it's like, oh, I'm surprised. Like, I didn't realize how, you know, versatile the city was. Yeah. Right. And it's like, yeah, it is. Yeah. Like, people can, always have anything that. Anything you need, you can film here. People always have that misconception about it, and then when they come here, it's, you know. But people will, you know, they believe when they see that's right. Yeah. And so if you have more and more films that were shot here that people oh, see, they go, wow, these... Fast. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. What's a classic or wildly successful movie everyone seems to love, but you just don't get? Birdman. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, oh, we got to dive into this. <laughs> I, got, I, I truly, I just, it seems... I love that you admit that it freely. It seemed self-absorbed and so, you know, sure. the, uh, I mean, amazing actors and everything else, but I was... I just, I didn't, I was like, why do I care? <laughs> and, and I did some of those films too, right? It, it's, I, like I said, I always started with much, many more happy films overall. Uh -huh. And maybe it's just one of those things that I always feel like I had to have somebody to root for. Yes. And I just couldn't find who I was really rooting for. How but, do you feel mm -hmm. about Paul Thomas Anderson? I don't think I have, I haven't probably seen enough to so i guess not much impression either way okay yeah Got that, that's probably that's how i was feeling his movies yeah. i'm just like i don't get it yeah <laughs> so i can understand birdman yeah. in that aspect too um that was definitely one where i liked it and i watched it <laughs> thought the editing was cool but then i had to like google the ending because i was oh, like right. i don't really know what like, happened what's going, there. Yeah, yeah. i don't think it's that as controversial of a take no as, yeah it's definitely not yeah, I was going to say it, and I could break down more about what I liked, and like, <laughs> except for when I was done, I was just like, well, that's two hours of my life. I'm not getting back. <laughs> Have you ever walked out of a movie before? Not willingly. <laughs> uh, my dad hates foul language, and when oh. I was a kid, we were in like the fourth row and it did a very slow march out of the uh, very end, like in the police station scene of Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Uh -huh. Oh, my gosh. And he was like, and in the quiet theater, he goes, that's it. <laughs> and got up and we walked out and I was like this isn't humiliating at all yeah <laughs> I did take my daughter once to see uh Lincoln mm -hmm. and we um it was a different experience because <laughs> in um about an hour or so into the film I realized I walked into the wrong showing of Lincoln and it was almost <laughs> over <laughs> but so it was, but yeah, it was like yeah, almost over it was like yeah. an hour later <laughs> I was like huh yeah we were late but I don't think we were this that happened late to yeah. me it was far less uh it was not it was the what happens in Vegas the stupid oh the Cameron, Cameron Diaz Diaz <laughs> yeah. and Ashton That's Kutcher funny. movie we walked in and 
probably watched a good 10 minutes of it before we all looked at each other and we were like this seems like oddly like forward <laughs> yeah. in the plot. like what's going on so we checked our tickets we're like oh we gotta go yeah to this other well, you see yeah. you see the name on sorry <laughs> yeah i feel like we missed quite a bit that's really funny. <laughs> how old is a lot more with people on their phones or they just look at oh there it is um what movie do people give you the most grief for never seeing um young frankenstein which i oh. should i should right i love comedy and, it's so good. Uh, it's exactly it, it Trevor, is. Trevor, why haven't ridiculous. you seen Young Frankenstein? <sighs> How much time do you have in a day? You know, <laughs> no, uh, no I, I just I never watched it, and then like I'm never sitting around again. It's not like a movie my wife would watch or whatever. Oh, so sure. it just yeah. have to be that I would sit around for two hours with nothing to do someday and go, and then it should occur to me. Yeah, like, I should just <laughs> yeah. write, like watch it. The last time I did that, it took me all the way until just a couple months ago to finally watch Halloween three. Oh yeah, I'm not sure I was better off. <laughs> is that the one that Chris loves? That's the one Chris, Chris loves. loves yeah. Halloween yeah. three. So he's our co-host. He's not here, uh, and he probably would have been upset. Yeah, yeah. I watched it off the uh, recommendation of Patrick Ray, who uh, does a lot oh, of yeah, films yeah. around here, and um, friend of the show. Yeah, I'm going to tell your friend of the show that that was a bad recommendation. <laughs> that movie's terrible. <laughs> but some people love it. It's, it's terrible. Got, it's got a following. Yeah, it's got a following. Oh yeah. no. Well. I don't want to ruin it for the four people who are yeah. haven't watched it. I have not seen it. I don't plan on seeing it. I don't think so it's don't a, worry about I it. I don't think you'll enjoy it, Sarah. <laughs> I know I won't. Oh, it's so bad. It. It's the Rocky Five of Halloween movies uh, where you just go, "Why did you? Even... Why were you making that one?" Yeah. Oh man, that's funny. Yeah, I, but I also feel like Young Frankenstein. Like that's a movie that film people are going to give yes. you crap for, not like Should. a normal person is yeah. going right. to give you crap for. It's like somebody yeah. saying they haven't watched Office Space. Right? Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. Oh, you just I feel like you have to. Yeah. It's like, Do I? Know Whereas yeah. Halloween Three, it's the one without Michael Myers. Right. People get it. A lot of people well, didn't watch it. Who's the bad it. guy in that then? Well, it's like uh, there's like a corporation. I don't know how. Oh, to... I don't know. It sounds yeah. terrible. Trust me, you don't. Uh... You're not going to like. <laughs> it's it. not a good film. But Young Frankenstein is good. I, I okay. did rewatch that. I recently. have not seen it either. But I've oh, never, I've never gotten any like grief for not seeing it. Oh, really? Like I don't feel like that comes up in conversation a lot sure you know, like normal people like definitely yeah. film people will probably like <laughs> yeah be like, it, oh, it's it's my favorite of the mel brooks it. It movies like clue. i hadn't seen clue until like three years ago oh yeah what movies do you find yourself quoting the most um wedding crashers and then people tell me i quote wedding crashers and then probably wedding crashers too much yeah. uh yeah no i i've never seen that it's the only film i've ever seen where my forearms hurt <laughs> and I realized it's because I was grabbing the seat in front of me, which nobody was sitting in. Oh, sure. That, and thank just, gosh. like laughing yeah. that hard. I, I, for some reason, just thought that uh, the, the quotes in that film are so good. Yeah. Um, we actually went back years ago. Uh, I had gotten the DVD and they had like the director's outtake mm -hmm. and uh, um, Vince Vaughn and Owen Wilson are doing it. And they're just breaking down all the lines that they just went ahead and had the freedom to make up and improv. And I just, yeah, I just think that that's a great story about friendship and love yeah. <laughs> and a few other things. Mom, I, the meatloaf. The meatloaf, yeah. yeah I, I haven't watched it in a long time, but it also came out, I think, when I was in high school, maybe the about to graduate or something. I can't remember what year it came out. but it, So that was a very huge movie for yeah. us in high school, especially. Mm -hmm. um, that's a really good one to quote. It's very quotable, too. Yeah. I, I think always, they're making a second one. Or they were just talking about it, yeah, oh, like so, which I don't nice. think, you know. Maybe they uh, should. It's worth a try. Do I miss that Vince Vaughn and Owen Wilson duo and like Vince yes. Vaughn's like fast talking yes. and like just the way yes. he delivers lines? Absolutely. Has he been in a, anything good in 10 years? No. <laughs> um, so would I think that anything he makes that's a Wedding Crashers 2 is going to be good? Probably not. But like I still would watch it because I miss those two. That's fair. They, You're right. They well, and also together. after Wedding Crashers everybody cast Vince Vaughn to, yeah, hey, did. can you cast and do that really physically? Yeah. And so it was yeah. overkill of exactly that character. Yeah. And if you're going to, by the way, it's not a criticism. If you're going to pay work in him to do that, he's going to go do it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that, but, but it was just like, okay, that's, that's a lot of the same character. Mm -hmm. So now we've had a break. So maybe yeah. we can yeah. have that. We can have it back. Bring it back. Okay. What is your most memorable movie going experience? I'll fudge a few. Pretty cool walking out after seeing A Christmas Story and then looking back now to realize how huge that movie became. Oh, sure. Wait, the... you walked out? Yeah. No, no, no. When oh. we laughed, you know, in other words, oh, I was like, wow, that was a really out. cool. Okay, gotcha. Like, I only went to see A Christmas Story on the opening weekend because my uh, our my br brother Lance wanted to go. What and year did that come his... out? Uh, that's not important. No, I think it was like uh, 83. I know that. I, I just like. Yeah. Because that movie was obviously set before. Yeah, it was in the, like the so 50s or something. I never know like, when they yeah. actually made it. Okay. So I think yeah. it was, uh, I, I do know because I do stand up comedy and it was part of my routine once to mm -hmm. tell people that I did that <laughs> in their responses. How old are you? Mm -hmm. uh, and um, and so that was pretty cool. Um, that was a pretty cool experience. I waited forever to be able to go see uh, Rocky Four because I had gone and it was sold out. And I remember that was, 
that was pretty cool though. Uh, just, I was a big Rocky fan when mm-hmm. I was a kid, but, sure. and then, uh, anything Star Wars, mm-hmm. but you know, even the Return of the Jedi was mm-hmm. pretty, was pretty awesome. Sure. What movie do you always defend no matter how bad people say it is? Uh, Rocky or Rocky two. Okay. <laughs> you try to make that movie. Yeah. <laughs> the acting's actually good. Everybody always says it Sylvester is. Stallone's a terrible actor. No, and, not and that. And Rocky, when Mickey wants to be his manager and he's like telling him no or whatever, yeah, he does the usual, no, nobody give me respect. Mm-hmm. But the whole, the body language and everything, it is so well done. And yeah. yeah some of the violence is, you know, it, 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 the, the fighting's overdone. But if you take back to watching that in a movie theater, it's perfect. Mm-hmm. It's perfect. But yeah, so... I, uh, I I defend it relative also just to even uh, the movie on its own, but the whole concept of Sylvester Stallone betting on himself to do, you know, where mm-hmm. they obviously didn't want him to be the lead. That's pretty cool. I thought he was pretty fantastic in those movies. I think people just like confuse the first couple with like what eventually happened to the <laughs> franchise. Um, yeah. And it's like, no, you got to remember, like the first couple were decently yeah. well made, like probably well received movies, too. And I actually really like the Creed movies. So, yeah. It's also an action movie that let everything breathe. Yeah. So I didn't love it as a kid, right? Because it was just like, I get to, like as a kid, it's like Rocky fight. Three. Yeah. Right? That's it. Uh, there's a fight. Then there's another yeah, fight. There's yeah. a fight. more training montage. Yeah. yeah. So, so then I, I can really appreciate those two also just for the, sure. for the time that it just kind of takes to develop everything. It doesn't rush to anything. Yet mm-hmm. still, I think both are a little less than two hours. What's a movie you were so excited to see but incredibly disappointed by? Oh, did I just pray Sylvester Stallone? No. <laughs> um, uh, Copland. I, I thought, um, you know, it, I mean, they just had an A list of, of mm. actors. I counted down the days till we could go see that. My wife and I think uh, we were engaged or married. I think we were married and uh, went to see that at the movie theater. And afterwards, I was like, all right, then. I really liked Copland. <laughs> yeah. So, so we're going to spend a lot of time. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> we're go to a lot of movies. I, I, I mean... I don't remember when it came out, but I rewatched it not incredibly long ago. It was probably a couple of years ago, and I was like, "This is I thought it was a pretty good movie." Really, yeah. I remember my dad really, really liking it, but I, for whatever reason, didn't watch it. I can't imagine he didn't let me watch it because we were watching Die Hard and Lethal Weapon all the time when I was a kid. But um, for whatever reason, I just was like, "Yeah, I don't know. I'm not interested." And so, for whatever reason, that's what my like brain clings to, and I haven't even given it a shot. So oh, maybe, maybe I should. I enjoy. I it. should uh, now. Um... I do think I will rewatch it because uh, it, it has it been a while. Yeah, well, it was a, I only saw it in the theater. I've never okay, watched it again. Give it go. another shot. Because usually when you leave a movie and go, well, that sucked. You I... don't go. I'm gonna can't wait to watch that again. Yeah. but th- it it's a lot of times good. past. I don't know. Yeah. That has to be at least 20 years ago. Yeah, or so. But it's so still... maybe no, that's what I mean. Like I being a different perspective to watch it now. Like I would yeah. think 20 years ago, maybe if I like would have watched All Creatures Here Below, I would have been yeah. like, yeah. that's so sad. Why or did I watch maybe that? In and 20 now years, like, that was awesome. If you watch Birdman, you're going to be like, oh, why did I ever just on this movie? I think I'm going to let that be one of my life's regrets. Yeah, okay. I'm just going <laughs> to, my, my last okay. day, I'll be like, hey, I never like, rewatched Birdman. Taste change like that's constantly. Right. It's like food. Like I yeah. hated mushrooms <laughs> 10 years ago and now I will eat them with a smile on my face. So I feel, ever I feel become... like <laughs> media is the same way. It's like sometimes you're just like, yeah, I maybe wasn't in the right mindset and didn't like resonate with me. And then you watch it at a different point in your life. And you're like, okay, I actually really enjoyed someday. That, I'm so. a famous working actor. No, it's because I went back and watched Birdman and it yeah. changed yeah. my life. <laughs> I know. They're like, there it is. <laughs> yep. You can do another one. Okay. I'm doing another one. Um, what's your favorite movie soundtrack? Are you a movie soundtrack Sorry. person? Well, not, not a ton, but um, I mean, I really, I really enjoyed Footloose. I mean, they're kind of cheesy, you know. Uh, I love Footloose. The Rocky Four one, just <laughs> you know, if you're gonna work out, that's a pretty good one. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then uh, honorable mention to Romeo and Juliet. Oh, oh yeah, sure. good choice. Yeah. yeah, that did have a really good soundtrack. I used to <laughs> listen to that yeah. all the time. That song, uh, what is that song? Number one crush or whatever? Uh, Garbage. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's yeah, a yeah. very just cool, unique song that uh, it's like maybe the nephew of uh uh whatever closer nine inch nail yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a really it's just like man i mean that song I, is I, just i a, can sing you some songs on yeah. that soundtrack right now like, <laughs> and I, it's also good for the that period of time yeah, it was yeah. very 90s well boz lerman is kind of like known for his music yeah he gets some yeah. pretty cool stuff like, like, brothers and sisters together will make it happen sure Remember that one <laughs> i think so <laughs> okay, sorry. that's my sorry, little singing interlude <laughs> i love that song um, what's the last new movie you watched? I think the last new movie I watched, I mean, wasn't in the theater, but I 
might have already mentioned Black Phone, actually. It's probably oh, the yeah? last, okay. well, there last you go. one I was, no, I was trying to think. Oh, you know what? Uh, we actually saw, um, it wasn't last, but it's not super recent. And the th- I think the first one I saw when people were going back to theaters was uh, uh, Nobody, which was kind of surprising. Hey, oh, that's yeah. so fun. That I was mean, it was, it was ridiculous. It was yeah, so yeah. unbelievable, but it, but it was a very, it was like a, it was like a throwback to there's no way any of this very could really fun. happen, but it was just yeah. fun. I enjoyed it. Christopher it was Lloyd. Very yeah. John Wick-esque. Yeah, totally. And, and that, I think that might have been my first movie back, actually. Uh, from, uh, yeah. After I watched pandemic. it on an airplane. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Top Gun Maverick scene in theaters. I'm so glad I saw it in the theaters because yeah, if I saw it uh, on a TV, it was also even just, you had to get caught up in the cheese. Mm. You had yeah. to get caught up in the moment. It's not like if you went into there and real quick, they said, hey, real quick, just fill out what you think is going to happen. I think I would have nailed it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but watching the theater, I thought it was amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was like, well, that's perfect. Yeah, that's great. I really always want to kind of hate on Tom Cruise. And then I go and watch a movie, like even the Mission Impossibles. And I'm like, He's really good, though. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I know. I, I want to not like him, but I can't. I I'm can't five put eight. you, Tom Cruise. I'm 5'8". He's a hero. Yeah. <laughs> Tom Cruise and Kevin Hart are my yeah. round <laughs> <Mount> Rushmore, okay? <laughs> I love them, and they can do no wrong. Heck yeah. What's your favorite needle drop in a movie? Um, I actually think it's not even from that long ago. I love... I we were watching Deadpool 2, and they broke out into that brutal fight scene and uh, they were playing nine to five. Yeah, <laughs> I thought that was hysterical. So, uh-huh. I thought that was hilarious. That's awesome. Uh, I remember in theaters laughing out loud as soon as the music kicked in. Yeah, because I really like perfect that song. Anyways, and yeah, just the, for the moment, it was so funny. I I, I do enjoy like surprising moments and yeah just like what well sometimes it's like uh it's like really horrific something horrific like you know when i think of the song singing in the rain i don't always think of the movie i think of a clockwork orange now because mm-hmm. that's so burned into my brain but this is a good moment of like it, uh, it actually just being really funny also in the moment because it's a song you wouldn't expect um but well and i i just recently saw everybody knows the story but just recently saw that i guess it was just a couple days before that um i think of the name right david chase is that right uh reached out to um steve perry to mm-hmm. actually let him know what was going to happen in the final scene of the sopranos because he was holding out on he was the holdout mm-hmm. on letting him use don't stop believing mm-hmm. oh. the whole rest of the band now right has toured off that moment yeah i mean they wouldn't be playing the no, arenas right. And uh, and he's not even you know been in Journey, but yeah, they. Um, I know Neil Sean had already given the approval. Whoever um, the other songwriter had already given the approval, and Steve Perry held out for exactly the reason you guys said. He said, if it's a bloodbath, um, you can't use the song. Mm-hmm. He said, I don't want people hearing that song and, and associating being, and so it with that. They called him kind of on the old NDA, and I guess, and he told him, um, and so then he he uh, he gave the approval to use it. So iconic. Yeah. That's cool. But you're right. Like, I wouldn't have probably, I mean, I'm sure I had, like, some idea of what that song was, but I wouldn't have been able to, be, oh, yeah, that's a Journey song. But now it's like, I know Journey. I know what it is. Like, yeah. Yeah. Huge, huge song. Go ahead. That's you. Well, no, I don't have any more. Oh, I have three more. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's do one more and then we'll. I have two more, actually. What movie makes you cry every time you watch it? I only watched it once, but I, I do cry at some of the dumbest uh, things. But uh, we went to Titanic. I <laughs> I bawled, uh, which is which is now later, right? It's funny how you evolve because then I was just embarrassed for crying because guys don't <laughs> cry. And uh, and now I'm like, well, I think it's actually probably really good to have had such compassion for <laughs> when they were, they you know they basically were deciding who could get off, had to stay on the boat, who had to get off the boat, and you know and could get rescued and mm-hmm. all that. And they were like making all the poor people die, and mm-hmm. that just made me cry so bad. Yeah. <laughs> I was sitting there with my wife. My wife was just like, man, this is sad. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like so embarrassing. And then I, I do cry um, usually when uh, um, Mickey dies in Rocky Three. There you go. Yeah, it's shameful, man. Rocky, feel, getting a lot of I love know, on this podcast. I, know, I feel like I know. a little tear jerky right now, to be honest, just <laughs> thinking about that. Um, is there an actor you have season tickets to, meaning you'll watch anything they do? I think a lot about Chadwick Boseman, because I think that was the last one, like, um, when he had anything coming out. It, it was going to be good, but I think that you just knew he was, he's just such a, a great actor. Mm-hmm. And... Um, the other one, though, I do need to catch up. Um, I think Claire Foy is amazing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, so, yeah, I would say those are two people um, that, you know, for sure anything they were involved with and um, uh, that 
really bummed me out when Chadwick Boseman mm-hmm. died. Just, I mean, obviously just a tragedy in and of itself, of course, but also just, I do think he was one of those people that everybody, it was just undeniably sure. great. Yeah. That, yeah. that, was that just, monologue in Mulraney's Black Bottom, yeah. like, oh, kills yeah. me every time. Like, he's, he was so good in that. Well, I even just watched uh, 21 Bridges for the first time. Just, yeah. Just like a couple months ago and actually really enjoyed that. Yeah. Yeah, he's great. Um, well, uh, that's a sad note to turn on, but let's, uh, I I wanted to talk (laughs) about some movies that are really important to you, whether they're influential, maybe they're your favorites or anything. So what's the first one? Okay. So I'm not going to say anything related to a certain boxing film. (laughs) Um, as, as a, obviously I didn't see it at the theater, but, um, the original Halloween really did, um, I think in a really, in a, say in a good way, always really uh, stay with me from a standpoint of um, how they created the suspense, mm-hmm. how it's really not very gory um, mm-hmm. it, at all. Um, and, and just that, that whole um, pursuit anticipation still, you know, the, um, you know, the, the main character, good person lives, you know, mm-hmm. still, so you kind of still kind of got that aspect of it, but that one, just because I thought it was so amazingly done and now later looking back, obviously, and when you're involved with the IFC and those type of things too, right, is they didn't have a real budget right. to do that, but yet they made a, an amazing film using more of the art of imagination. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I remember I remember seeing, uh, we were in Lawrence and seeing Seven, and uh, uh, the, still even the next day going, what? <laughs> uh, you know, so so I think some of those, right, different reasons, but just, yeah. you know, they, they just, you know, fixate you, Pulp Fiction, mm-hmm. you know, just because I'd never seen anything like it. And again, uh, I'd say for me overall, the primary theme outside of ha- Halloween, which I was a little kid, is is still a lot of things where you see them in the theater and mm-hmm. nothing else is going on, and it just, that, that's, you know, has your whole focus. Mm-hmm. I also, uh, actually as a kid, I thought E.T. was pretty uh, Oh, yeah. I was, was terrified of E.T. as a kid. Oh, really? I thought it was amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I guess before we let you go, we'll talk about IFC KC a little bit more, if that's okay. Yeah, sure. Um, so, when obviously, when this episode airs, some of the stuff you have going on might be done, but I was curious what you guys kind of have cooking right now, because I know you've been trying to do a lot more um, projects to just to get yeah. people to make things or competitions and things. So what do you have going on? Yeah, sure. So um, we, we we have something, you know, in October called Every Picture Tells a Story. Um, and even if people aren't able to catch it this year, it, it's pretty cool where you um, pair um, a filmmaker up with an artist and uh, you can make a documentary about the artist or you can really just create a story based upon that piece of art. And so um, it's great that the... Uh, um, uh, Glenwood um, Fine Arts Theater is actually letting us have a screening there on a Friday night, which is awesome. That's cool. Uh, and uh, so we, we have that one coming up. And then in early 2023, what I'm um, excited about is we're going to have something called the Film Lab. And uh, it's what it sounds like. Um, we're going to make a short film based upon a script that you know has been submitted into uh, either the IFC or KC um, um, screenwriters. And decide on you know what 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 can we make on a reasonable budget and a reasonable timeline all of that. Then we're going to have a you know a director, an editor, you know sound design, every all the crew, all the uh, acting positions, and even in the casting process, we're going to have people be able to sign up and be uh, mentees and go through the whole working process. So mm-hmm. you'll have like three people shadowing the director through the um, through the entire process or, you know, three people shadowing the um, editor, you know, and, and, and anything in post. So I'm really looking forward to that because I think, again, it's, um, you know, one, we'll be able to collaborate and make a really high quality film, but also helping people to get, you know, some of that experience to make maybe their first or second film. So that's probably, that's something um, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about that'll happen in the first... Um, couple months of, of 23 that's really cool, cool. Yeah. which i'm sure you'll have more information probably on the ifc kc yeah. website yeah so we have yep in fact we actually have uh, our meetings updated now uh at least three meetings in advance uh had not been great about that in the past so um hey, yeah. COVID hit us all really really hard yeah it was very hard to be any part of any kind of like group or you know non-profit like i am and go through COVID because yeah how, how do you do you yeah. know you you're based off of meeting in person and doing events and yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was hard. It was hard. It was it was great that you, we could get access to people, you know, to on virtual events, mm -hmm. right, to be able to come in and speak or those type of things. But attendance really suffered and momentum yeah. was just hard. was it really was hard. down. You're just not making those like in-person connections that like a lot of these groups like thrive off of. So yeah, My sympathies are with you. It's hard. I'm glad you guys are rebuilding, though, and like getting back in there and doing. Yeah. Stuff. And we have uh, we have the elections in November. Yeah. So uh, I think November 16th is when we're going to have our um, uh, elections. And, you know, we're, we are looking for more uh, board members and people that are going to be really passionate because it is going to be a lot of work. And we are really looking for people to oh, also Justin. even help us fundraise. <laughs> oh, hello, Justin. So. Oh, hey. I don't know if I can help you raise money, but yeah. Well, there's plenty of uh, yeah. there. There's a lot at the meeting. We'll cover all the positions. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but no, I, I, it is. It's it's something um, I really am um, excited about. I understand that it's going to be a lot of work, and I guess the thought between the two is, um, and I think the other people on the board feel this way. If we're gonna put this much work into it, we're gonna we're gonna make it awesome. That's great. I mean, really, because there's no reason to put all this work into something, in your passion, you know, because you already work full time jobs, all of those mm -hmm. things. You're saying no to other things to say yes to doing this. So I do think that, at the end of the year, my hope is, you know, my my walk off is going to be a a red carpet best of Kansas City um, showcase where we have a short film competition, where people really uh, go out and you know make first class a type films like the unexpected we have a contest and we're able to um you know give the winner enough to really kickstart something towards making it into a feature film and hopefully you know be able to have something where you know in say december of of 23 you know invite um a lot of uh people from kansas city in to come watch that and be a part of that film festival to hopefully supercharge more discussions around making more films in kansas city and making feature films in kansas city what a good way to end the episode. Yeah. Man, thanks so much, doing, Trevor. Yeah. Doing cool things. And if I'm not reelected, forget everything I said. <laughs> <laughs>